couple of brief examples. If v of t is velocity of some object at clock time t, then what does v prime of t mean? It's a limiting value. of delta v over delta t. And it is, it's the rate of change of v with respect to t. And that's basically a measure of how quickly velocity is changing. It also tells you whether uh, velocity is increasing or decreasing. Um, and that's what we call acceleration. How quickly and in what direction velocity is changing. Okay? What about an integral from A to B of V of T dt? What's that equal? Well, first of all, we observe that velocity is a rate of change of position with respect to clock time. Okay? Well, velocity is the rate of change of position with respect to clock time. Now, I don't assume that you necessarily know the definition of acceleration or the definition of velocity, but just illustrating it, and these ideas are not too difficult to comprehend. If velocity is rate of change of position with respect to t, so the integral from a to b of v of t dt is what? Well, just taking this statement here, okay? Uh, if y of x is the rate of change of q with the x with respect to t, then the integral of y of x from a to b is equal to the change in q of t. Just translating this over to this situation, where it's q of x, not t, where we use t instead of x and v instead of y and position instead of q, we see that the integral from a to b, v of t dt is change in position. Again, you're not going to have 100% understanding of this necessarily, uh, depending if you did a good uh, investigation of applications of derivatives and integrals, you'll understand these things perfectly. Uh, well, maybe not perfectly. I think you'll understand them even better after the physics course. But you should have very good understanding of what I'm talking about here. Not all courses um, are able to do what they would like with applications. And a lot of courses choose theory over applications or just manipulations over applications. Um, in any case, uh, that's what we have there. V of t dt is change in position. And uh, we'll note that um, on a small interval, if you take the average value of v of t multiplied by the change in t, you get a change in position. And let me write something down here and then refer to it. Okay, average velocity times a change in t gives you the corresponding change in position. Now, when I drew this picture, I ran out of time, didn't have time to really uh, put it all together. Remember, we we're talking about how if I just do a single straight line between here and here, it's not going to represent uh, a good average value of the y function versus the x function. But if I break it up into little intervals and add the results from each interval, I do get a good approximation to the change in the Q here. Same thing here. And if we can say that on each small interval, we take the average velocity and multiply it by delta T, we're going to get a very good approximation to the change in position. And as the size of those intervals shrinks down, when we add them all up, we get a perfect result for the change in position between the two clock times. 
Again, that's something that should be familiar to you from your calculus course. If not, uh, or if it's a little fuzzy, you want to go back and review the idea. Many more applications are possible, and uh, some of them are addressed on other videos that we can refer you to.